Welcome my fellow YouTube viewers, this is Jason from Jason G Designs. In today's tutorial we will explore how to create a basic selection interface. Basically we will be using CSS and JavaScript to highlight div elements on the screen and go from one element to the next or the previous by clicking the buttons at the top. Once the counting stops, the next or previous button will become disabled depending on whether it's at the end or the beginning of the amount of divs and also it will stop counting. This clip shows what we want to achieve with our final product. In this screen we have our setup ready to go. I set up an index.html page, a main.js file, and some CSS. I also did a simple flexbox layout for our tile shapes. For those of you who would like to follow along with the video, I added these files to a GitHub repo called Tutorial Resources. The link for this will be in the description. If you want the code specifically for this tutorial, you can copy and paste the raw code from GitHub. Just make sure each file is in the same directory at a single level when you bring it to your own computer. Also in Tutorial Resources is the main JS.txt file which we will work from. So since main.js has the completed project, let's erase everything except the comments to start anew. First, we start with the counter. This counter example comes from the closures article at Mozilla Developer Network, linked in the description. What this does is assign the first number to a variable, 0. This will be our array index initial value. The change by function changes the provided value up or down, depending on a positive or negative integer. The return value of the entire count function provides two more functions that use the change by function, count up and count down. These use a value of 1 to increase and the value of negative one to decrease, uh, respectively. Finally, the last function returns the private counter variable, which holds the value of our changed number. In the select next function, let's assign a value to a variable. We will set up the variable current index and assign count.value. You might notice that this is our return value from the count function from earlier. Before we go to the next step, let's add a tile variable to the very top of the file under variables. We will assign it to all divs with a class of box using document.querySelectorAll. After that, we need to increment the value once by 1. This is done because on first click we will need to increment the index starting at 1 instead of 0. You will see this in action soon. Next, we can add a console log to check the length of our node list. It returns 5. Since our node list length returns 5, but our count value starts at 0, we will add a new variable titled list length and assign it our tile length minus 1. Right after that bit of action, we can now add the code that increments the index each time the next button is clicked using the count function to enter function count up. In order for this to work, we must add a new variable for our button and an event listener. Setting up two console logs for the current index and list length shows us how the numbers will match with each click.
Next, we apply the index to our tile divs. To do this, we reference our tile variable, which holds our null list of divs. Putting current index in square brackets indicates the div we are on, according to the counting up of the index number. As you can see, the div elements are being highlighted one after the next, but the previous one isn't being unhighlighted. Also on the console, when we go higher than the amount of divs in the list, we get an undefined error. We will address this shortly, but let's fix the highlighting issue first. On the next line of code, we have the same thing, but this time we subtract 1 from the current index to target the div that's right before. This time we use classlist.remove. Now, for the undefined issue. For these, we will simply wrap the previous lines of code with if statements to check for undefined values. Currently, when we click above the maximum index number represented by our list length variable, the index and highlighting keep going. We want the highlighting to stop when it reaches the final index position. To do this, we will make the next button disabled when we reach the last tile. To get the copied if statement to work, let's add a reference to the upcoming previous button. Here, we are checking if the current index is equal to the null list length. If so, then we use the set attribute to add a disable attribute to the button. In CSS, I lowered the opacity for the disable buttons. Next, we can start on the previous tile functionality. First, we need to add its event listener. After playing around with the location of the current index line of code, I discovered it can be used outside of each selection function, so we can move it just below the count function. We can next add index decrementing code. Just like before, we add the code to highlight a tile. But this time we not only check for undefined values, but also check to see if the current index is greater than zero. To select the previous tile, we subtract one to select the tile right before the current one, and then we add the class is selected. Then we want to remove the highlighting from the current tile. After testing out the functionality of the previous button, I noticed that it wasn't working correctly. It turns out that both the previous and next functions need their own reference to the count.value function, so I adjusted the code to how it was before. Our final step for this tutorial is to paste in our code that to disable the previous button if we reach the first tile going backwards. For this, we check if the index right before the current one is less than or equal to zero, then set the disable attribute. In the else statement, we remove the disabling for, for the next button if it is at the last index. Here is the finished product. In a shameless plug, I'd like to point out this concept being used in JGD Gallery Maker, an online copy and paste service I created where you can add an instant photo gallery to your website. 
Links to this and other resources will be in the description. And as always, please like this video and subscribe to my channel so I can continue to make more content for you, my viewers. Thanks.